we are looking at today are the Minecraft research so in Concordia. So Concordia is a world that we have built on a um, Java server and it is a game. It's got different parts of the game or different phases of the game. I am talking about um, the whole today, just as a whole, how it worked in this one session. So we've done this with three different um, versions. I'm looking at the third version today. So this was at an international baccalaureate school. Just put this down. Okay, so we're looking at our Minecraft um, server and it's a game that we've built called Concordia. It comes in three phases of the game, so there are three different parts of it. We'll discuss this in a little bit. I'm Kim Balnaves, I'm from Murdoch University and my main supervisor is Dr Natasha Rapper. She was also from Murdoch University. We've got co-supervisors, Professor Ingrid Richardson from RMIT and Professor Susan Ledger from Newcastle Uni. Professor Ingrid Richardson has just released a book um, about children's cultural play in Minecraft and Professor Susan Ledger has written many, many articles about the learner profiles and the International Baccalaureate. So they have been very, very helpful to have on this journey. Just keep going. So the reason why we did this was to play Concordia, most importantly to play and have fun. So the purpose of the clubs that we ran doing Concordia was that the children that participated had fun. The um, game was set to be suitable for children from 12 to 16 um, and we really wanted to get them to understand that we're trying to show them all the informal literacies, all those literacies at the intersection of informal and formal literacies they're using at home, like looking on YouTube, following YouTubers, uh, learning all the skills and the ideas and the chat groups and everything else, and then being able to implement it in almost a formal setting because we were in a school, it was a club. So um, it was really interesting to see that sort of, uh, sort of apex of where that was happening and be able to get the data on that. All right, so the club was about um, playing Concordia, <laughs> but also looking at how much of the International Baccalaureate Learner Profile is involved in playing the game. So we were looking at um, the International Baccalaureate Learning Profile, which is used in a lot of our middle years programs of the International Baccalaureate. I'll go into that a little bit further because we've used it, sort of came up informally because we were getting the children to scaffold their answers um, using the different attributes from the learner profile and we found they started using it to be able to build their gameplay which was absolutely fascinating. Um, we chose Minecraft because it is different to other sandbox games. I mean it's great, it's a really good strong sandbox game with so many different biomes and um, environments and characters and updates and so much support within the community as well and something that children are playing anyway. So um, when we put this club out there, we only wanted 20 children because I needed to be able to collect enough data or get data at a deep enough level, um, but we had 76 apply. It is a very, very popular game, so that was a great thing. Children believe they have a great amount of literacy in it and a great lot of cultural knowledge that they in capital that they can bring to the game which is absolutely fantastic it's one of the other reasons also because there are different modes to the game so there's the creative mode where you can create and build and do all different things and there's also the survival mode where it gets um, a lot more frantic and exciting um, and you've got to have a pretty good knowledge of the game to be able to survive so we're investigating twins play at that intersection of formal and informal education or learning. Okay, so the new context of education and all the um, 21st century learning and new expectations that are coming about because of changes in society, um, changes in sustainability, changes in how the world is operating, changes, digital changes, um, look, means we've got new expectations about ability to communicate, ability to work in teams, adaptability to change, 
All of these things are going to be so important for children in the future. Preparedness to solve problems, ability to analyze and conceptualize, ability to reflect on improved performance, ability to manage oneself, ability to create, innovate, and criticize, ability to engage in learning new things at all times and being open to learning new things at all times and the ability to cross those specialist borders. So building knowledge across all different areas is becoming increasingly important because we're seeing the links as more knowledge is developing, we're seeing how they all link together and we need to be able to get our brains to go out of one box into another. So that's all from UNESCO 2019. Um, in Australia, we've had the Alice Springs Mapatwe Agreement that was in 2019. That's just being updated again now. So it is largely about um, looking at how we can create um, a one nation. So uh, the Indigenous people of Australia becoming more involved and all children having opportunities. So one of the goals that we really focused on in this study was all young Australians become confident and creative individuals, successful lifelong learners, active and informed members of the community. Now, one of the, so we did have some Indigenous students in the study as well, and this was because we wanted to see the interaction, the cultural differences. A lot of the problems within schools are the cultural differences that are there. However, um, the Indigenous students were also big participants in Minecraft um, and in the outside Minecraft community. So when they came in, um, because it was a culture they were familiar with, we found they didn't have any problem at all. There was no lack of confidence. They were able to communicate as much as everybody else. It was very fascinating. We keep going. Right. The game in um, Java is a lot more innovative than Minecraft education. So the school we were at already had Minecraft education and that would have been the easy way to go. <laughs> but we wanted to use um, the Java server because we could add a lot more to it. The students would have a lot more power. They could create, build, alter, redesign, develop their own NPCs, change the codes, bring mods in, do all different things that they can't do in Minecraft education, which um, although it is a sandbox environment, is a very controlled sandbox environment. Um, we wanted the children to have more agency. So the idea was that they would have a lot of agency within the game and then we would be able to see how they work together. Um, the world we created enabled students to learn through collaboration and modelling um, from expert ideas, not our expert ideas, but going out and researching their own expert ideas and we were amazed at how good they were at doing this. It was very fascinating. The narrative main character of Dash the Rabbit. Um, so there's a narrative throughout the second half of the game. First half of the game, there's a little bit of a narrative, but the main focus is on building and creating. The second part, you're really building the narrative and becoming part of the narrative. Um, and there was a big focus, so we made it pretty difficult. <laughs> Difficulty level was high because we were looking at productive failure, what they were doing when they failed, how they built their resilience, what sort of strategies were they doing for problem solving. All right, so this gives you a bit of an overview of how we've gone with doing it. This is what we found last time we ran the club in the last version of this research. These were the main things that um, the teachers who were present and the students thought that they really got out of doing the club. So this is some details about it. I won't go into all of it, but as I mentioned, there are three phases. Phase one is building houses and connection and the video walkthrough. So that's in creative. Phase two, practicing skills for for the roles. They had to go on a detective narrative story, talk to the NPCs, go on quests. To complete the puzzle so there there was that was um a little bit combative but not very uh but once we got into the team gameplay this is where it was instant and it was almost like an esport so they had to work together they had to think instantaneously they had to just do things um it had to be finished in 10 minutes so there was pressure there was time and it was really interesting looking at that survival battle the contextual challenges, 
Luckily, we weren't um, inhibited by COVID restrictions because we got in right when there were none. There were COVID restrictions before and COVID restrictions after, but we were very lucky and our participants were very motivated. Main can take problems we had, and these have been protected, predicted because we'd done it before, were um, installing the Minecraft Java server and all the mods required to run the game on the Macs. Um, the time constraints of clubs times, obviously children can't stay there all night. The fact that they really wanted to just keep working on the game, um, but they had homework loads and some music and sports events, which did cause some problems. But other than that, all good. So this is the IB Learner Profile. So when the um, children were reflecting, this is what they were looking at. Um, looking at the inquirers, open-minded, knowledgeable, caring, thinkers, risk-takers, communicators, balanced. So you can see the sort of underlying parts there. And this is what they're using all day, every day in their school. So they're very used to it. They're used to the language of it. They're used to thinking about um, reflecting through the IB learner profile. So this gave them a common language as well. So they had the common language of Minecraft as well as the common language of the IB learner profile in their reflections. So at the end of it, these were the learner profile attributes that the children thought they developed during the play on Concordia. Uh, principled, we were a little worried about that. <laughs> there was a little bit of a lack of that. But it's interesting that the thinker and the risk taker were particularly strong. And they're both skills um, that are very much needed. And communicator and caring um, when we were talking to the children in the interviews, they were things they thought they really needed to keep working on. We were surprised at the knowledgeable not being as high as we anticipated because the children did spend a lot of time researching on combat techniques um, and house building. So approaches to learning is part of a cognitive curriculum that is in the International Baccalaureate. And this falls under um, the learner profile. So these are the skills that build the learner profile. So when we were looking at these, we were talking about these to the boys um, who were participating as well. And you can see a lot of them came up in the game and how they would participate. So I'm just going to show you one response now. And thinking about thinking skills, social skills, communication skills, self-management skills and research skills, you can see just in this answer. How many of these are here? So this is a 13 year old male, was very excited to build his house, um, was very excited about the potential for building, being a Java server. Um, after the first session, he realized he was building. He started researching his favorite YouTubers' best builds to utilize some of their techniques and tools. He had not built on a Java server, so excited about the potential of the mods available to use. So he did a lot of research. Then we have a quote from there. So you can see straight away how those approaches to learning are being built in. Um, in the next quick interview, where we have a person reflecting, one of the students reflecting on their participation in it, you'll be able to see how many of these ATLs are actually involved. So I'll go back to that last screen and then listen to the interview. In Concordia, you have to use um, a, a few learner profiles. So during the boss battle, uh, my team and I had to communicate using um, the communication skills to make sure that we had an effective boss battle plan. So what we had thought up initially was that um, we would go in to defeat the boss and the boss only so that then the ads would have gone and we used communication plans and open mindness to fit all of our plans in and we created one big effective plan that worked really well even though we had a shortage of members in our team. An attribute I could work with was... Um, more of a thinking skill as usually I'd go straight to what I'd do and also a more risk-taking approach as um at one time we had to face off with the pirates and I wasn't sure I couldn't do that well with the PVE and what I didn't know was that I would have done well but I was just too scared to go and try so I could work more on my risk-taking and I could also work work more 
on my um thinking.